lost immediately but eventually older files will be replaced by newer files so let's write the changes to the disk this will set up the new proposal again the tendency or trend is towards using logical volume management for laying out disks within the Red Hat Enterprise environment as well as other distros as well because LVM allows us much more flexibility with respect to how we allocate storage so the logical volumes are being created and they're all located by the way beneath the dev mapper directory and they're prefixed with the volume group name which takes on VG underscore short host name dash the logical volume name. We'll be looking at logical volume management later on, discussing the hierarchy and how to comprise them, the components that are part of them and how they work, which will further explain what happens during installation. So we need a bootloader. The default is grub and the default is to place it on the root partition. So or to load the root partition that is but to place it on the boot partition to load the root partition so the bootloader will load this instance of Red Hat Enterprise Linux from the root partition but it'll be located in forward slash boot which is a lone partition of 500 megabytes outside of the scope of logical volume management in order to make changes to the bootloader we can secure it or require that the user authorize or unauthorize supply a password let's click OK and that adds another layer of security to the system all these options by the way can be scripted using kickstart so let's click on next we could add another entry in the event that there's let's say another distro or another instance of Red Hat Enterprise Linux that needs to be loaded by this bootloader so supposing we use free space we could add let's say an older version v5 or another version of 6 to boot the independent version sometimes it's a good idea to maintain a backup version of the OS on the same hard drive to help you recover in the event of catastrophic failure booting but the rescue option on the boot CD provides us with enough of an environment with the appropriate drivers to be able to recover in the event of turmoil so here are the categories that are available basic database web server virtual hosts and so on desktop etc so we can take any of these doesn't matter let's go ahead and make it a web server for now we can always alter it at some point and if you'd like a desktop you can now the last time we didn't make changes during installation let's go ahead and click on customize now and this is where we see the groups of packages that are available to us so the base system includes these packages base basic installation the shell key services etc console internet debugging tools directory client for talking to LDAP for example dial-up networking no longer is important fiber channel over Ethernet not used in our case various monitoring tools and Finiband in the case of clustering and a number of other key items that are excluded by default but available in the event that we need them. Perl support is always important. If you use smart cards then that's an option and if you have an iSCSI SAN then install the iSCSI storage client to be able to connect to it. And the servers category your Red Hat Enterprise Linux box can perform as a wide variety of servers including a Samba server sharing out its file system, a backup server, so you can back up other systems and this system, an LDAP server, email, the current SMTP choice is Postfix as opposed to SendMail or Exim and that is what you'll be tasked with managing in the event that you turn your Red Hat Enterprise Linux box into an email server. In the older days both SendMail and Postfix were provided with a switch utility but now the folks at Red Hat are defaulting to Postfix for obvious reasons including but not limited to ease of configuration FTP, NFS, NIS and other items so these are categories of servers that may be installed at any time sysadmin tools etc web services 
we've elected to install this server as a web server which is why the items are checked and if you install databases MySQL and Postgres are the ones that are available the clients are auto installed because other tools rely upon their presence their library presence however depending on your needs you may need to install one of the database servers or both of the database servers since they operate on different TCP ports it's quite feasible for you to run them in concert system management these are protocols that are used to manage a system including the ubiquitous SNMP virtualization KVM is provided as well as Zen to help you virtualize other operating systems on your system in the event that you have enough resources and you'd like to share those resources desktop environment if you'd like to have for example a minimal desktop that can also be used as a thin client then you can pick the desktop if you want a general purpose desktop then this is an option as well which gives you additional applications which we'll see as they come up and there are packages that are tied to each of these items graphical administration tools these are tools that help you to administer your system and if you go to optional packages you'll see those items that are not selected as well as those that are selected the important ones are installed for example notice a system config kickstart is not installed this tells us that by default it won't be available and if you go looking for it to help set up kickstart as we will be doing then you'll have to install it at that point we could save ourselves the hassle by installing it now there's a GUI tool for LVM but Red Hat's moving away from their GUI tools for the management of some of these services so it's best if you know how to administer them from the shell using the appropriate commands like for example in the case of LVM the PV, LV and VG command sets for creating the three tiers of LVM storage types so these are the GUI tools that are available general purpose desktop if we go to optional packages we see that the bulk of the packages are installed sans three packages DV grab for example if you're capturing from a DV device like a camcorder then that may be something that's of interest to you it's actually 37 to 49 so 12 are missing and a number of other items there are fonts you can turn on and this is for rendering in a variety of languages etc so depending on the content you come across on the net will determine whether or not you need certain fonts and again the desktop related packages are ideal in the event that you plan to use your Red Hat Enterprise box as a desktop in some cases that is ideal for example for scientific workstations or engineering workstations then perhaps you should install all of the desktop items or install the desktop the client version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux which will by default include the dex desktop environment let's also turn on X Windows support this will ensure that we have a GUI Remote Desktop Client allows us to connect outbound to Windows systems and VNC systems using RDP and VNC respectively. And there's also the option to configure KDE for those of you who like the KDE desktop environment. Support for the input of international text, so characters not used by your default character set this will give you that flexibility in the event that you're using a system to communicate with others in other languages and a number of applications internet browser for example now the whole desktop category takes care of all of these GUI tools installing them for us development I items and various languages support install of course the languages that are important to you so let's click on next and move forward you get the sense that this section allows you to select from the main categories base system servers web services through languages these categories can be manipulated once the server is up and running non-issue and typically that is probably the more ideal time to make those changes to your system it's a good policy to install less initially and compound as necessary notice that the build this time will require 
just under 1,150 packages, double our last effort. So we went from 219 to 500 and something to now just under 1,150 packages. The more you install, the more packages are required. As we've mentioned, Red Hat Enterprise Linux varies in storage requirements from 3 gigabytes to 5 gigabytes from minimal to full installations, which by today's standards is a minuscule amount of storage. So on any system you intend to put EL6, you should have at least that much storage available. Ideally, you should also 